Hi, thanks for joining us for our online service today. Now, if you've never been to one of our Monday night prayer nights, I encourage you to come out. This has been a highlight for Sam and I for our, our week that we look forward to, Monday nights at 7.30. And because we've been in such a state of isolation, I look forward to seeing my church friends. And we take the first part of the evening just to visit and to connect. There's something about seeing someone in, in life, a face-to-face -face interaction, and just laughing and hearing about their week and how they're doing. And this is a really safe place to do it. We are socially distanced, we have masks, and after we take time to just connect with each other, we move into a time of prayer. And this has been so powerful as we connect with God. Now, if you don't feel comfortable praying out loud, come anyways. There's people that come and they pray just quietly in their minds and there's some people who love to pray out loud. But this is such a great time for us to connect and grow as a church body and to grow in our faith with God. So Monday nights, 7.30, come to our building and we meet in the sanctuary. Now women, um, we have an event for you, which is an online event, and we are hosting a paint night. So it will be happening on February the 9th at eight o'clock, and you need to register by February the 2nd. So that's coming up right away. And, um, with the registration, you can select if you want to uh, purchase your paint package. For $10, you get to pick up your package from church, and that's all the supplies that you need to do a pour painting. That's a fluid art painting. It's a very abstract painting, and I'm going to be um, instructing on how to do that. Um, or if you want to purchase your own supplies, you can do that as well. Please check Facebook as there has been um, an event that has gone out in your emails. And um, if you don't have that information and you would love to be a part of this event, please put a comment in today's um, chat and I will make sure that I get that information out to you. Now, Pastor Matt and his team, they continue to provide awesome content for our youth, which goes out Fridays. And Sunday mornings at 10, check your communication. And um, he always posts things on our Facebook and our YouTube channel called City South Church. And kids, every Sunday at 10, we have a new kids lesson released. And if you've been tuning in, you know that we've been including the kids. They've been part of these lessons. And it's been great to see them as a part of this teaching team. And... I want to thank you so much for your tithes and offerings, for being generous during this season. Continue to give by going to our website, citysouthchurch.com, and click on the Give link. Now, this has been a really challenging season, as we know, and many of you have been struggling. And the worst thing you can do is to struggle on your own. We, as a church family, we want to support you during this time. So reach out to us. We want to pray for you and we want to support you. So please send us a comment, um, email us privately, Tyson at CitySouthChurch.com, Carolyn at CitySouthChurch.com, or Matt at CitySouthChurch.com. Connect with us and we want to be there for you. Have a fantastic week. worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. And see what our Savior has done. See
Hi everyone, so glad you could join us today. Question for you, do you ever find yourself too distracted? Have you seen that uh, movie, the Pixar movie Up? Heartwarming uh, movie. And there's this character, an animal actually, in this cartoon, and it's a dog. And he's got this special collar, you know, this is all make-believe Pixar magic, but instead of barking, what it does is it translates what he's trying to communicate, and so humans hear English. And so you, this dog can communicate to, to all the different humans. And uh, the, the funny part about this dog is he'll be talking mid-conversation, all of a sudden he'll be like, squirrel. And then he'll be talking again, oh, squirrel. And as soon as he sees a squirrel, he gets distracted. It's like, squirrel. And he actually says, squirrel. And so it becomes this kind of comic relief uh, throughout the movie of the squirrel. Do, do you ever feel like that in uh, your day-to-day? -day? You're just so distracted that all of a sudden you're like, whoa, over there, whoa, over there. Started thinking about this, this idea of just distractions through our days. And so I started doing some poking around and, and researching. 
And, and I found it interesting that, that our human brains are actually created in such a way that it encourages distraction. Because every time we're distraction, distracted, we get a dopamine hit. That's the, 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 the part of the brain that releases this dopamine that uh, becomes uh, associated with reward or pleasure. And so every time we get distracted, it's like our brain saying, ah, that's a nice reward. That's like a, a little bonus for from whatever you were doing. And so what does that do? That creates us to be want to be distracted again and be distracted again. But studies have been looking at this and just finding that no matter what it is that you're, how you're distracted or what you're distracted from, it takes about 25 minutes for us to get our complete and utter focus back. Think about that with your job or work, whatever you're doing, you get distracted 25 minutes to get back. In the US, the number one reason for auto accidents, you guessed it, being distracted. But it's a phone, a phone call, sub looking at the person that you're talking to beside you in the passenger seat. Number one reason for auto accidents. On average, uh, people touch their phones, look at them 50 to 75 times in a day. Some of you might be saying that's high. Just keep track maybe for an hour. How many times do you just look at it, check something? Some of you might be like, oh, that's a little low. <laughs> um, social media is part of that reason why we check or a game or an app. Uh, if you're the ages of you know, 25 to 34, they say on average you spend two and a half hours a day on social media. If you're a teenager, they say nine hours a day on social media. I just find that mind blowing. Do you get too distracted? Are you just simply too distracted? We're in the midst of a, a series. We started it last Sunday. You can go back on the YouTube feed. It'd probably be the easiest place and uh, to watch that message if you if you missed it, where we introduced this series that we call Essential Habits. And, and I truly believe this is one of the most important series uh, in my time here at South. You see, we're, we're living in a time where, where everything is kind of turned upside down. And I, I sense, I, I, I've been praying about it, that, that God wants to call us back and kind of center us to kind of, kind of stabilize that. And, and a big part of that stabilization is, is to have some essential habits in our life, this, this rhythm, because our life is run by our habits, our rhythms dictate what we do, who we become. And so I want to talk about four essential habits. We're going to look at prayer we're going to look at people, scripture, and blessing. And so this today we're going to we're going to be looking at that first one, prayer. And, and I want to take us to um, a story in the Old Testament where we can look at this idea of distraction and prayer. And we find it in, in a Bible called First or a book in the Bible called First Samuel. And as you can imagine, First and Second Samuel talk about Samuel. And we're going to dive into the beginning of this book. It's it's First Samuel chapter three. And so, can you imagine? As you can imagine, it's it's the beginning of this person Samuel. We're kind of seeing the the beginning of a story. And this is where we find Samuel. He is serving under the high priest, kind of the the head religious leader for all of Israel. And then that person's name is Eli. And Samuel's an eager student. And so we find them there in, in chapter 3, and it starts off like this. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. That statement begs me to ask right away, um, was the word of the Lord rare because God didn't want to speak to them, or was it because they weren't listening? And it's always good when you when you read scripture to, to kind of weigh it against the whole story of scripture. Uh, it's dangerous just to take one little 
kind of fragment of scripture and, and have it on its own and, and build a whole view of God on that one little fragment. It, what we always want to do is kind of put it in its context of, of the, the story that we're reading and then the whole story of scripture. And just a total side note, when, when I look at the whole story of scripture, I see God constantly and always speaking. Um, it's, are we stopping and listening? So one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. So here we got Eli. He's, he's losing his vision. Some would say this is a bit of a foreshadowing. This is a bit of a, a picture of the nation of Israel and Eli himself of, of no visions of God, not hearing from God, his eyesight going there. They can't see God. They can't hear God. And he goes and he lies in his usual place. So, you know, I think bedroom, your normal bed, uh, wh wherever it is in, the, in, the, in this temple, in this tabernacle where they were, he would just go. The lamp of God had not gone, gone out. And so there would be in the area where kind of the Holy of Holies, where, where, where God's presence was, there would be this lamp and it would stay lit all day long. The priests would keep it lit all day long, and then they would let it, uh, when everyone went to sleep in the night, it would go out, and then they would relight it in the morning. And so it's saying, you know, it's just nighttime's coming, people are kind of settling down for bed, so it's not, you know, in the middle of the night, late at night yet, and, and the lamp hasn't gone out yet. And Samuel's lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. So instead of Samuel going to, like, a bedroom, he wants to be right with the presence of God, where the ark is. This is this is where God's presence was. He was like, where's God's presence? That is where I'm going to sleep. I can't see it being comfortable. I don't see them allowing him to, you know, set up a bed there and make his bedroom right there. That, that would not go over well. The picture we get is, you know, Samuel maybe grabbing a blanket and laying on the floor right before the ark, wanting to be in the presence of God. And this is where our story takes place. There's Samuel. He's laying there. And he's falling asleep. You know that kind of moment when you're not totally fast asleep, but you're not awake yet? And all of a sudden he hears his name being called out, Samuel. Wow. Well, must be Eli. There's nobody else here. And so Samuel gets up and he is any good kind of student witty. He goes and he hurries over to Samuel and he says, Yes, yeah, Samuel, you called. Here I am. And Samuel's like, didn't call? Go back to bed. I think of Eli being roused up. You know, you're almost asleep and you get woken up. Probably a little bit of irritation, a little bit of frustration. Samuel goes back to bed. He's falling asleep. And all of a sudden he hears his name being called again. And he rushes over to Eli. Eli, you called. Eli's like, I did not call. Go back to bed. He's probably thinking, you silly boy. Stop waking me up. I'm trying to have a good sleep here. It took a third time where he hears his name. And Eli says, He's starting to clue in. And he's like, this must be God calling him. Because it's not me. So he says, Samuel, when you hear your name being called, say, yes, Lord, I'm your servant. Speak. And so this is what Samuel does. And God speaks to him. But, but here's the thing. God doesn't give him like a warm, fuzzy message. Oh, Samuel, I got good plans for you. It's going to be easy sailing from here on out. God gives him a hard message. Think of him. He's a boy, a student to the, to the teacher. And God says, this is what you need to tell your teacher, Eli. Him and his family, they're done. They were disobedient for far too long. They went against 
my ways. And worse off, they were the ones supposed to be leading the people towards me and they were turning them away. And because Eli's family, his sons were doing this and Eli didn't have the strength to stop them, him and his family are going to be done. It's a tough message to share to your teacher, Eli. So they wake up. Eli hurries over. And as he's hurrying over, Scripture talks about how Samuel opens the doors to the temple. People see this as as kind of a symbolic nature of of a new era of hearing from God that, that it gets open. And Eli says, okay, Samuel, don't hold anything back from me. Tell me everything. And Samuel, being obedient to God, goes through and says everything that's going to happen to Eli. Pretty much all of it, not pleasant. And Eli, to his credit, says, that's what the Lord wants. I accept it. Are you too distracted to even hear from God? With everything that happens in our days, in our life, do we get so distracted that we can't even hear from God? Can we we relate to that beginning of that story where it says God didn't really speak much? Can we say, ah, God doesn't really speak much to me. And and just like I said with that story, my, my question then becomes, is it, God not speaking to us, or is it us being so distracted that we don't hear and listen? Is it possible that, that we get so busy in our life and we get so distracted with so many things happening that we don't put ourselves in a place that we can hear from God? You see, we need to develop the habit of listening to God. And then that's part of praying. We, we often think of praying as so much as speaking, but, but I want us to focus on the listening aspect of prayer. Prayer is just communication. And like any good conversation, there needs to be speaking and there needs to be listening. Do we listen to God or are we too distracted? Who are you in the story? Are you more like Eli or are you more like Samuel? Do you find yourself just doing the regular things and the routine like Eli, going to sleep in your regular spot? Do you find yourself just going through the motions day after day after day? Or are you more like Samuel and you say, you know what? I want to spend time with God. I'm going to spend time with God in his presence. Do you feel like your your spiritual eyesight is fading and you're relying on old stories, old encounters with God? Or is your eyesight young and fresh because you're you're constantly having these new stories and and you have visions, you have these, these things that you hear from God that you feel like God's nudging you towards? Are you like Samuel and there's, a, there's an eagerness to hear from God and to, to be with God? Or are you like Eli and following God almost becomes like a job you don't like anymore? You just do it because that's what you do. It's like a coat that you just put on and you can take off whenever you like and you don't even really like the coat. Is that what following God has become for you? Or is there an eagerness and a freshness to it like Samuel? You think of you think of Eli, and it took him three, four times for Samuel to come to say, for Eli to clue in that God was speaking. Here's an old man that's been supposedly serving God his entire life. And it took him that long to clue in what God was up to, what God was doing. Would that scare you to become like that? 
that you could be going to church your entire life for decades, that you could be even reading your Bible for decades. But when God speaks, you, you don't even recognize it. Would that thought terrify you, scare you? Eli or a Samuel? And then, and then here is, to me, such a crucial part of this story. Obedience. What Eli got in trouble for, and God says, no amount of sacrifice, i.e. no amount of worship, is going to change this fact. You and your sons were disobedient. And God told Samuel to tell Eli this message, even though it was a difficult message to tell. It wasn't a, you know, a happy and pretty message. And what happened? Samuel was obedient. And this is one of those themes we see throughout all of Scripture. Knowledge is overrated. How much you know about God, how much you know about Scripture, not that that's unimportant. It's just highly overrated. What's highly valued by God is obedience to him. Doing what he says. Hearing from him. So what do we need to do to, to listen to God as we pray? Uh, probably the simplest answer is we, we need to spend time with God. Be like Samuel. He wanted to be in the presence of God. In the Old Testament, God resided in the ark, in the Holy of Holies. And so that's where Samuel wanted to be. Now in the, the New Testament, after Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God resides with us. But I think sometimes we're so distracted, we're so busy, we got so much going on, we have so much technology, we have so much noise, that we don't take time to recognize God with us and to spend time listening to him. So what does it look like? That, that picture of Samuel curling up in God's presence, being with the ark. What does that look like today in your life? For me, in uh, 2021, it means I have a, a chair in our house and every morning I go there, set the alarm. Amy and I are trying to hold each other accountable to get up not hit the snooze button a bunch of times. And I sit in that chair. I read some scripture. We're going to talk about that in a few Sundays. But then I listen. I try to be in God's presence. I try to push all the distractions. No technology. No music. Nothing. Just quiet. The kids aren't awake yet. And I try to just spend time in God's presence and listen. What's a place, a time for you with little distraction, no distraction? It will be different for all of us. We're not going to make a rule about it has to be at this time and this place. What works for you that you can pause, push all the distractions aside... And God, who is already with you, that you can just listen to him. What are you wanting from me, God? What do you want me to talk to? What are you trying to say to me, encourage me with, challenge me with? How can I be even more obedient to you and what you say in Scripture? And for me, another key to this story is, is not to rely on age or past experience experience or knowledge, but to have a, an excitement and engagement of, of wanting more of God, to spend more time with God, to hear more from God, because you can never have enough of God. So, so I want to challenge us, instead of living a life of distraction, have your life, your prayer life be about listening and hearing from God of breaking some of the old routines to be in God's presence, of focusing on obeying God, 
I want to challenge you with that. As we pray, as we develop this essential habit of prayer, can we spend a big portion of our prayer life listening to God? Next week, we're going we're gonna to talk about talking to God. But I want to encourage you, listen to God. And so God, I pray that you would help each and every one of us this week as we try to develop this essential habit of listening to you in our prayer lives, that we'd be able to push out all distractions and focus on you because you are speaking. And so we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Shall soon.